Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, I know a lot of you have been really spun up about House Bill 1240, the proposed assault weapon ban here in Washington State, and we have been fielding tons and tons of questions in the comment sections down below. Now, I know I don't respond to all of those comments, but I do read a lot of them. So yes, all of you who routinely tell me to go F myself, thank you very much, but I'm gonna decline that. But yes, I do read those comments as well. What I've done today is I've picked out a few of the questions that I really, really see a lot of from some of our viewers. And these are questions that I've actually seen repeated, but I'm gonna give the credit to one of our viewers who were kind enough to submit it. So we're gonna spend a few minutes today and talk about answering your questions about Washington's assault weapon ban. Okay, so the issue we're talking about is House Bill 1240. Now, as you can see, we are not coming from our normal location. No, instead, we are taping today's video at Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington, Washington's nicest indoor facility. You've heard me brag about them a lot. And if you want more information, check them out at Security Gun Club. That is security with an E, securitygunclub.com. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna read to you about seven questions, questions that were really, really commonly asked. I'm gonna give credit to one of our viewers and I'm gonna give you guys some answers because a lot of you have pretty complicated, pretty well-developed questions as it relates to House Bill 1240 and what all of this means to you moving forward. And I wanna get some of those questions answered. So without further ado, let's get rolling. Okay, the first question we got comes from Steve O, and Steve's question is, I've seen a list of suggested assault weapon rifles. Any list links on shotguns, pistols that may be deemed assault weapons? Thanks. Okay, Steve, that's a really good question. Let's go over the banned shotguns or the proposed banned shotguns under House Bill 1240. The legislation reads, a semi-automatic shotgun that has any one of the following. So the list of banned shotguns will be a semi-automatic shotgun that has any one of the following components. A folding or telescoping stock. A grip that is independent or detached from the stock that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. A thumb hole stock. A forward pistol, vertical, angled, or other grip designed for use by the non-firing hand to improve control. A fixed magazine in excess of seven rounds or a revolving cylinder shotgun. So specifically what models will fall under the purview of those restrictions, I can't really say, but that is going to be the legislation as it relates to semi-automatic shotguns. Now on the pistol side of things, let's take a look at what the bill says there. Do they have a list of pistols? No, they don't. It's gonna be based upon components. The proposed legislation states, a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of the following. Okay, so we're talking about a semi-automatic pistol that accepts a detachable magazine and has any one of the following components. Those components are a threaded barrel capable of accepting a flash suppressor, forward hand grip, or silencer, a second hand grip, a shroud that encircles either all or part of the barrel designed to shield the bearer's hand from heat, except a solid forearm of a stock that covers only the bottom of the barrel, or D, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some location outside the pistol grip. So I think you can see right there that clearly the AR pistol or any firearm with a detached stabilizing brace is being deemed unlawful. What specific makes and models of firearms fall under those categories or those restrictions? I can't say off the top of my head, but Steve-O, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, our next question comes from Othello P and the question is, what rifle would be legal to own after House Bill 1240? Well, Othello P, that would be any firearm that you currently own, because let us remember that this law does not ban the possession of these firearms, but it will ban your ability to purchase them in the future. So any firearm that you currently own will still be owned by you. And then obviously our bolt action, lever action rifles and things such as that, that does not fall under the purview of these restrictions. Okay, the next question comes from Dale B. Dale B's question is, how am I supposed to get the parts I want to stock up on when the only gun shop in our small town up here on the peninsula is refusing to do any transfers? I wanted to place an order with Arrow. Okay, Dale, listen, I can't speak for that particular FFL. I do know that many FFLs here in the Puget Sound region, including Security Gun Club where I am right now, are still doing transfers, but a transfer is only necessary for a lower receiver. 
If you're talking about any other parts or components, you can get online, order them, and have them shipped directly to your home. What I do recommend you do, however, is call around. There are other FFLs that are likely to still do transfers because we probably have a few more weeks before this becomes reality. Okay, the next question comes from Mubin A. Question is, what's the consensus on the likely date again? And there's a lots of comments about it potentially being early April. Mubin A, that's a really, really good question. So listen, we did this video right here and we kind of tried to look into our crystal ball and figure out, you know, taking a look at the legislative history and how things normally track through both the House and the Senate. When is it likely to get through all the committees? When is it likely to get to the House? When is it likely to get voted on? We are anticipating somewhere around April 22, 23 is when the legislation would be passed. And then we're looking for a signature by the governor sometime in a big fanfare press conference somewhere around April 24, 25, or 26. That gives us roughly a little over one month from the taping of this video. So if you are thinking about stocking up, do so now. Okay, the next question comes from Paul V. The question is, wonder how long before this is challenged in court? I would guess not too long. Well, Paul V, you are absolutely correct. As a matter of fact, I would venture to guess that the pleadings are probably already drafted by numerous organizations and will be dropped the very second that Governor Inslee signs the signature. I do anticipate that we will see at least one suit filed in state Superior Court, probably Thurston County Superior Court, and then we're likely to see another suit filed somewhere over in the eastern part of Washington in a perhaps more conducive environment over there in state court, which will ask for an injunction on this statute. In addition to that, we are likely to see suits filed in the Western District and Eastern District of Washington in the United States District Court. I anticipate at least four to five lawsuits, all of which will be requesting an injunction. As we get closer to that date, if necessary, we will start teaching you about the case law related to injunctions. Good question. Okay, the next question comes from Kirk S. Kirk S. has this question about assault weapons. What about a trust that owns the weapon? Well, Kirk, this is where I may have some bad news for you. And we've done a couple of videos, including this one and this one right here. And this is the sad reality of it, is that there are many lawyers out there who draft gun trusts that will tell you that they can put all your guns into that gun trust. The problem is, is that any semi-automatic rifle or assault weapon as now defined by, or potentially defined by Washington state law, is governed by one document and one document only, and that is a 4473. So unless your document is a short barrel rifle, then it is not governed by a form one or a form four. And therein lies the problem in trying to put non-Title II firearms into a gun trust because there is no form, no document in which you can transfer that firearm to an actual entity such as a trust. You can do it on a Form 1, you can do it on a Form 4, you can't do it on a Form 4473. So even though whoever drafted your trust may have listed all of those firearms as being on your Schedule A and therefore owned by your trust, bad news is, my friend, your trust doesn't actually own those guns. You are still the owner, and so theoretically, the trust doesn't own them. Okay, and then finally, the, our last question comes from Marcus D. And I get this question a lot, or some form of this question, and the question goes like this. Love the videos about what's going on and how it pertains to us. Wish you would post videos about who's doing what to stop these things and who we can support that is fighting for our Second Amendment rights. What can we do to help as numbers make a difference? And Marcus, that is a fantastic question. And yes, we do routinely do videos when there is litigation ongoing trying to preserve your Second Amendment rights. But what can you do? Who are the groups worth giving to? Well, this is, use the same criteria that I use when I determine who's really fighting for us. I look around, I take a look at all the lawsuits that are being filed in this country uh, on behalf of lawful and responsible gun owners nationwide. And we take a look at what are the organizations that are actually behind it. And there are four that you see Okay, on a national level, you see the Firearms Policy Coalition, you see Gun Owners of America, and you see the Second Amendment Foundation, which was started by Alan Gottlieb right here in Bellevue, Washington. All three of those organizations, fantastic organizations, totally worth donating. On a local level, hey, let's remember the Silent Majority Foundation. They fought like hell during the pandemic, and they are fighting right now trying to overturn RCW 9.41.370, which is Washington's magazine ban. And they're fighting like hell down in Oregon as well on Oregon Ballot Measure 114. So it's a fantastic question. And the short answer is Firearms Policy Coalition, Gun Owners of America, Second Amendment Foundation, and the Silent Majority Foundation. Those are four worthwhile organizations constantly in the trenches, getting their knuckles bloodied for your Second Amendment rights. Listen, I hope that answers some of the questions that you may have about House Bill 1240. Obviously, you guys will have more questions. You put them in the description box down below. We will pay attention. Listen, if you have any more questions, 
about this crazy bill or what's left of your Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, that's all in the description box down below. In the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself from Security Gun Club. Thanks for watching and stay safe.